Welcome to the Laboratory of Treating Research 2024 Dental Chronology Intensive Summer Course. DISC for short. Three weeks of everything in treating analysis from feel to shop to microscopes to analysis to presentation of results. This year, how about field work in the middle stretch of the Verity River watershed? Sure. Lots to see and do here and reasonable logistics for driving and camping, including classic Red Rock country. We started in Camp Verde at the Museum of the Verde Valley Archaeology Center. Lots of exhibits to see here, including a nice poster showing solar angles changing through the annual cycle. A oh, good one. During winter at solar noon, the sun's rays come in low, thereby hitting the castle and warming it. But in the summer at solar noon, the sun's rays come in high, hitting the cliff wall above, thereby casting a shadow on the castle, keeping it relatively cooler. Huh. An early example of passive solar heating and cooling. DISC 2024 was here in mid-May, so the castle was half and half in sun or shade, confirming this analysis. We also stopped in at Montezuma's Well, an upwelling of millions of gallons of water daily. Nice, a veritable oasis. It's one of my favorite places in all of the American Southwest. We also visited Tuzigu, upriver on the Verde, and sort of a companion site to Montezuma. Uh, say, I heard once that Tuzigu isn't datable by tree rings, with the reason being, in part, because dendrochronology doesn't work in the Middle Verde River region. Say what? Well, yes, tree ring dating of archaeosites here is notoriously difficult. That doesn't necessarily translate broadly into dendro doesn't work here. Well, let's see if DISC can assess these notions. You guide us to some archaeosites, and I'll get us to a forest of living trees. Sounds good. Up in Red Rock Country, there must be plenty of archaeosites, no? Plenty, meaning hundreds. They're abundant, but mostly smaller than Montezuma and Tuzigu. Anything not dated conclusively yet? Well, up in Sycamore Canyon is one. The drive is slow, but beautiful. Even through a recent burn area, I see. Pretty in its own right, and then a short hike to the site. We had permission to collect from Sycamore Canyon Cliff Dwelling, so we obtained cores from 13 wooden construction elements. Hmm, short and or tree species not usually datable with traditional tree ring analysis. Any hope here? Not with ring width dating, but a new technique is emerging called wiggle matching of C14 values. So there's hope for this work. Dendrochronologists from the last century wouldn't have had wiggle matching as an option, so the statement that archaeosites of the Verity River are not datable by tree rings is not unreasonable. What about a living tree site? Where should we go for that? You might recall from our group shot at Tuzigu, the mountains right behind us. They peak out at just over 7,000 feet, so plenty of ponderosa pine up there. Let's try Mingus Mountain. Huh. Pretty standard looking ponderosa pine stand. All right. Though no orange bark oldies, it appears. No, perhaps evidence of human influence on this stand. Still, reasonably easy tree coring. And reasonably easy sawing of stumps as well. And we even got a nice sunset from Mingus Mountain. Nice, and a fire lookout on top as well. Uh, back in the lab, we mounted cores correctly with tracheids vertical. Shouldn't need stating, but yes, mounting cores must be done correctly. Then, shop time. There's nothing quite like operating power tools. Enjoy the power tools, disc students, but be careful back home in your own wood shops. Cross dating was doable, but difficult. All the usual dating techniques were tried, including skeleton plotting under microscopes and checking against master chronologies. Also, the bar charts of existing ponderosa pine chronologies from throughout Arizona. Yeah, thank goodness for the generosity of past dendrochronologists donating their data to the Treating Data Bank. Measurements up next. I'm still old school using the benches. More modern technology is now able to create high-res photos of the samples in order to digitally measure rings. The Mingus Mountain collection cross-dated pretty well as confirmed by the usual Kofecha check. Okay, strong inner series correlation, pretty good average mean sensitivity, and few if any segments flagged as being weakly dated. Nice. Of note is a decrease recently in inner series correlations at the 20-year scale. Hmm, interesting. That might explain why this site is hard to cross-date. Just getting through the most recent 20 years must have been tough. 
The final chronology from Mingus Mountain isn't very old, but it looks pretty typical for ponderosa pine throughout Arizona. A mean value of 1.0, lots of ups and downs at the annual scale, and some minor departures at the decadal scale. A 21-year running variance shows an uptick in interannual variability in the latter decades of the 1900s. Hmm, again. Though that interannual variability seems to be returning to its baseline level since 2000. Puzzling, but either way, an interesting observation. Uh, one last thing from Mingus. Half the trees sampled were growing next to an area cleared of trees, while the other half were within the forest interior. Interior trees show the classic negative exponential growth trend related to size or age, without exception. By contrast, the edge trees show variable changes in productivity beginning at about the year 2000. Hmm, a third time. Say, did those stumps date? What was their cutting date? Ding, ding, ding! They did date, and they were cut right at the year 2000. Wow, that can't be a mere coincidence. Probably not, but hard to say just what the mechanistic time might be. So, does dendrochronology not work in the middle Verde Valley? Dendro can work here, given that certain site and tree selection principles are followed. But, as Professor Towner often says, past cultures selected their construction beams without us dendrochronologists in mind, so archaeocytes aren't necessarily datable with tree rings. Meanwhile, we got in some tourist stuff in Tucson, starting with the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum, a must-see for first-time visitors to the desert. And a nice picnic banquet in your backyard. Quite the bird sanctuary. Thanks to all who participated for a fine experience. Good trip out there in the field and good dendro back in the lab. Farewell, DISC 2024 grads, and feel free to stay in touch. We enjoy seeing what you wind up doing with dendrochronology in your own research and teaching.